praise God. We just thank you this morning, Holy Spirit. We thank you for each and every person that's on their way, those that have made it here. One of the words I kept hearing this morning was joy. We thank you, God, that even in the midst of it all, there's your joy. For you said, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. You said, you make known to us with the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. May the God of hope fill each and every one of us with all joy and peace in believing so that by the word of God and by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may abound in hope and trust in the Lord. These things he has spoken to us, that joy, his joy may be in us and that his joys may be full. We thank you, God, for the Lord your God is in our midst. He is in our midst. We thank you, God, you are in our midst no matter what circumstances that we are walking in, going through, that we will come up on the other side of it. For you are a mighty one and you will save and you will re we will rejoice. He rejoices over us with gladness and he will quiet us by his love. We will exalt him forevermore. We just thank you, Lord, that we are here today to give you all the honor and the glory, that we can thank you in advance for everything that you've already done. We thank you, God, that you've already gone into our future and dealt with situations that we know and don't know. We thank you, God, that you woke us up this morning. We thank you we are in our right minds. We thank you for our children. We thank you for our leaders. Father God, we thank you for the joy of the Lord. We thank you, God, that there is joy no matter what takes place. As we enter into a new year, we will bring the joy of the Lord with us. No matter what it seems like, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like, we know that the joy of the Lord is with us. So on this day, we say goodbye to everything that is not of God. We say goodbye to those oppressive thoughts. We say goodbye to those things that try to bind our feet to stop us from moving. We say goodbye to those things that try to attack the self-esteem of man. For Father, we know that the joy of the Lord is at hand. We know, God, that you are with us and we grow closer to you, God. We grow closer and closer and closer and closer. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for every angel that you have dispatched. God, we thank you for every angel you've dispatched on our behalf. We thank you for the angels, the warring angels, the guarding angels, the ministering angels, the healing angels, the traveling mercy angels, and every angel that we do not even know their names. We thank you for the angels that are assigned to each and every person. We thank you, God. Let them be dispatched on their assignment. Let them be activated in the name of Jesus. Let us now speak those things as if they were that you've given us a long time ago. We thank you, God. We, God, in this midst of your presence, cover us with the joy of the Lord. From the front to the back, to the east, to the west. Cover us with the joy of the Lord. Let the manifestation of the joy of the Lord be so heavy and so powerful and so mighty that when we leave this place, we will know that we experience the joy of the Lord. That even when we enter into our homes, that the joy of the Lord is filled from crack to crack, from portal to portal. That the joy of the Lord is filled on the roof, the ceiling, and the basements. That the joy of the Lord engulfs us everywhere we go. That the joy of the Lord covers our cars and our vehicles as we ride and we go and we walk. That the joy of the Lord just walks with us ahead of us. 
And that there is a peace that we have never experienced. Shalom, shalom. Not just a peace, but a double peace that covers each and every home, that covers our leaders. Father God, we thank you for Apostle O, Pastor G. We thank you, God, for the visionary of this house. We thank you, God, for everything that you've spoken to him in the past, the present, and the future. We thank you, God, for obedience. We thank you, Father God, for iron sharpens iron in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the family of the Simons in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the spiritual children and the biological children. We thank you, God, for everyone that's connected to them in the past, the present, and the future. We thank you, God, for the timing of the name of Jesus, the timing, the timing, the timing that this is the time that we stand tall, that this is the time that we hold up their arms, that this is the time that we cover them in the name of Jesus. Father God, let us cover them in every way, every possible way, like a jigsaw puzzle, that we are just bounded, we are groomed, we are going and flowing, that there is no break in the name of Jesus, no space in the name of Jesus. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you. We thank you for the hidden nails, God. We thank you for the hidden nails, the ones that are not seen, but the ones that are praying, the intercessors. We thank you for the God, for the intercessors, every type of intercessor. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for the prayer warriors. We thank you, God, for our children. We thank you for the unborn children. We thank you for the children that made it here today. And God, we thank you for the children that we don't know where they are. Cover them, God. And let them on this year, before the year is out, experience the joy of the Lord. Let them, before this year is out, reach out to their guardians and their parents. Let them, before this year is out, give a word to their fathers and their mothers, spiritual and biological. Father God, we just thank you. Let the joy of the Lord engulf us today. For we have joy and we thank you, God, for those that you are healing, those that you are bringing financial restitution, those that you are being, feeling physical restitution, those that you are bringing mental restitution. In the name of Jesus, let your power be known. We don't have to wait to 2024, God. For somewhere it's already 2024. We thank you, God, for the double blessing and the double peace and the double healing in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, as we walk, Father God, in the name of Jesus, into your mighty arms. We thank you, God, that you are God and God alone. We thank you, God, that you are consistent you are loving, you are healing, you are majestic, you are the advocate, you are the Lord of Lord and the King of Kings. We thank you, God, for you have always been consistent in our lives. We thank you, God, for everything in advance. We thank you, God, for walking into the future and correcting everything that needs to be corrected. We thank you, God, for healing in this city. We thank you, God, that we don't have to wait on the Lord because you are here. We thank you, God, engulf this atmosphere, Holy Spirit. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, engulf this atmosphere. Let us, each of us pull on the, the spirit realm, God. Let us pull on you, God, for a manifestation of a word that we've never heard before. And we just thank you, God, for what you're doing and what you've done. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen. Good morning, City of Restoration. Praise the Lord. Good morning, good morning. This morning we come to give God all the praise, all the honor that is due his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Yes, God, yes, God, we bless your name this morning. Sound of an army arising. I hear the sound of 
of an army arising. I hear the sound of an army arising. dominion and power both now and forevermore hallelujah come on let's give God the highest praise say hallelujah hallelujah come on tell them tell them say hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. as a corporate body glory say hallelujah glory hallelujah. to the name of Jesus
Come on, help us say, Lord, you've been good. Lord, you are good. Lord, you've been good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. Oh, you my I owe you my life. Can't praise you enough. Even if to be 
worship you. Oh, my soul, oh, my soul. Rejoice. Take joy, my joy, my king. What you hear. Just a little bit. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, God is my all in all. Yes, Come on, they didn't believe you. Tell them one more time, God is my all and all. God is my He's all. everything I need him to be. Come on, Amen. Come on, put your hands together like this.
trust in Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Just to take him at his word. Just to rest upon his promise. Just to know the same, the Lord, yes. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust, how I prove him oh and oh, Jesus, Jesus, pray. Just Jesus, praise team, help me say, oh, oh, praise. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, how many of you have a testimony of such? If it had not been for the Lord who was on your side, my side, 
where would we be? Praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm nothing without him. Anybody in this room can testify to that. I'm nothing without him. I've tried it on my own. Praise God. Many times over, praise God. But I've come to realize I am simply nothing without him. Praise God. Praise God. What a wonderful day to be alive and well to be here. Amen. In worship with you. Praise God. We thank God for you and you and you. Praise God. Before you take your seat, do me a favor. One more time. Put your hands together and bless him. Praise God. And let us thank God for our wonderful Quintana. Praise God. Our ensemble this morning. Praise God. Amen. We are delighted. Praise God in their gifts. Amen. And we praise God for each one. Amen and amen. Praise God. You've been standing a while, so I'm going to have you seated for just a moment. Praise God. Amen. We welcome you. We indeed do. Amen to this house. Amen. The city of restoration. Praise God. Where it has been my joy and my privilege to be able to serve you as the lead pastor here. And our ministers in turn, we extend our love. Amen. And our support. Amen. In every way to you this holiday season. Amen. We say to our guests this morning, welcome. Amen. If in fact it is your first time, this is a great time to pull out. Amen. What is our connection card? Perhaps you were given a bag on the way in, a bag of goodies. Amen. On the way in. In that there's a connection card. Amen. If it wouldn't um, put you out of your way, would you take that card, complete it? And at some point today, perhaps uh, during or after the service, Feel free to get extended to an usher or someone at the front desk, amen, before you go today. We'd love to get in contact with you, keep in touch with you rather, amen, and support in any way we can. Maybe today a decision is going to be made on your part and you want us to know about it, amen, whether it is to give your life to the Lord or maybe in part you are experiencing some uh, need and a need by which you need prayer for. That's the form to complete as well and return it to us before you go today. Is that good? Amen. So please again, sir, ma'am, before you go today, make a, uh, um, fill it out and again, return it to an usher or the front desk on your way out. Amen. This morning in just a few minutes, um, we're going to have, amen, another uh, a special selection that's been prepared, amen, on behalf of our kids, our children, amen, and our youth, our young, young people, that is, amen. And so in a moment, I'll be inviting them to this stage, amen, that's our Kids City, amen, um, crew, as well as our No Bounds. I believe there's a conjoint effort in some way to present something to you on, in that of Christmas, amen. So we want to make them, uh, get them prepared for a moment here. Uh, as they would prepare to come. But before that, amen. Pastor Saida, would you make your way? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Pastor Saida is one of our associate pastors here. Amen. And she and her team are prepared to welcome on this Sunday, praise God, some new faces, new individuals, amen, to the ministry. And we want to take a moment just to acknowledge such. God has been doing some amazing things in this year, amen, in this house, amen. Uh, we have gone from uh, just a few to great numbers, and even beyond that, even our team has expanded, amen, and so we thank God for that, amen. It's a year, it's been a year, it seems, of new beginnings, amen. Her mic, wonderful. As Pastor Saida makes uh, mention of those names, would you help us celebrate each one as they come forth? Amen. Pastor Saida. Amen. I think we're getting better at this team. So we need you to keep giving us more practice. Amen. So we're excited. We get excited when we have new um, members that come and join us at the city. Um, before I go into the members, I just want to say that, um, today is a great day for us. If, we, if you've brought something to be a blessing to our leaders, we're going to ask that during the offering time, that as you're passing by with your offering, we have a beautiful box here. Is this the box that we can put out? We can, if you have a card you want to give to them, you can put it in this beautiful blue box. If you have a gift bag or a gift, you can bring it up to the front as you're bringing your offering. Amen. Amen. Now I can do the part that I came up here. <laughs> Thank you. 
excited that our team, that we get to um, share love and welcome our new members. So I'm going to ask as I'm going to ask you to save your applause because we've got quite a few. Save your applause until the end, okay? Can y'all work with me? Because I'll get excited and lose focus. Y'all don't want me to lose focus up here, amen? So at this time, we're going to call our brother Richard and sister Sherna Hayward. this next family, our sister Farron Alexander, our sister Mariah Bush. We also have new members for Liluna Faison, Lilani Faison, Javon Lee, and Jamaris Bush. Amen. Let's thank God for them. I'm going to ask if everybody at this time, if we all at one time can give God a praise for our new members. Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! On, on behalf of our pastor and our apostle, we say welcome and we love you. Are you ready for an amazing tribute to the holiday season? Let's welcome our Kids City program, as well as our No Bounds group joint effort together. Give God a praise for our young people. Good morning, church. We will just like to show you guys and explain what does Christmas really mean. P stands for Christ. H stands for holy. R stands for righteousness. I stands for irreplaceable. S stands for savior. T stands for togetherness. M stands for magnificently mighty. A stands for awesome. S stands for spirit.
All right, come on, y'all get up on your feet and give God a praise for our young people. Amen. I don't know about you, but that's where it started for me, right there in children's program. Amen. To be able to do that and do it with an ounce of courage. Amen. How many know it takes a lot of that? Amen. To stand before this wonderful audience. Amen. And we honor them. We also want to thank the staff. Amen. The staff. Let's give God praise. Amen. For our youth program directors, pastors, leaders, ministers, servants. Amen. Our children are going to actually make their way there. Some things that we prepared for them. So if you uh, are prepared to release them, amen, they can, they can be free to go. Amen. Uh, at this time. Amen. While we were welcoming you as guests, amen, I want to take a quick moment, amen, to um, welcome, amen, this one guest, amen, uh, that, amen, you've not really met before, amen, you've not had the opportunity and the privilege to get to know her like I have, amen, over the years, but amen, she is with us, amen, on this Sunday morning. Amen. You know her as pastor. Amen. She still is pastor and first lady. Amen. But on last Saturday, amen, she was conferred to, amen, conferred to her was that of her doctorate. Amen. Can we honor Dr. Georgia Salmon, amen, who received her demon Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. We thank God for her. Amen. Interesting uh, to that. Due to a change of plans and things in part, amen, we were able to make the trip to Michigan. Amen. Grand Rapids, Michigan. Amen. Last weekend. And so, amen, we were there. She was able to walk the stage. Amen. It was a last minute call. Amen. Uh, <laughs> and they placed her on the program. You would think, in fact, had you been there, that she was supposed to be there, you know, doing, given the fact that she ended up doing a few more things while there, amen, as though they had been prepared for her. God made a way, amen. And I'm so grateful, amen, to, to that end that she was able to travel there and back and we it together as well, amen, praise God. So next Saturday, um, not Saturday, next Sunday, I apologize, next Sunday, shortly after service, amen, if you're wanting to continue the celebration, amen, um, we are going to be joining uh, for a meal shortly after service, call it lunch, call it fellowship, at Olive Garden here in Brandon, Olive Garden in Brandon, um, right across from Westfield Mall, y'all know where it is, right? All right, praise God. That's next Sunday shortly after. I can't give you a time because it's whenever we're done here. <laughs> Amen. Um, but it is next Sunday. If you'd like to come and just have time, break bread with us. Amen. You're free to join us there. I'm going to use this word lightly. I said free to join us. Amen. Amen. Because I heard what our spirit said, Just No, no, no. Somebody said the meal is free. Amen. Praise God. Amen. You still got to pay for that degree. You still got to pay for the bills. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Amen. But for real, for real. Amen. Join us if you are desiring to. Amen. Um, important about that is if you are, in fact, um, wanting to come by, I believe it was Wednesday of this coming week. We need no so we can make an account for you. You can certainly come, change your mind if you want to after, but if you want to secure your seat, amen, because we're going to call ahead. There's no reservations. There's not um, that can be made, but we're going to call ahead and let them know just about how many are coming. Now is to let us know. Text us. Share with us your interest, the number, your name and number um, in your party. That should include you. The number. Text us your name and the number of people in your party, which should include you. So if it's my wife and I making it simple, then it's two. All right, everybody got that? Amen. All right, wonderful. Amen. All right, I don't get to do this often, so I'm just gonna take my time. Amen. This week, um, this Wednesday, just to be reminded, we, um, we 
ended with our Bible study journey um, about a week ago, amen, and this week also will not be meeting in our virtual Bible study, so join us at the top of the new year in January 2024, amen. So again, this week, take time with you and your family, loved ones, make whatever plans you have to make, amen, and we'll convene or start again, that is, uh, in January 2024. Speaking of January, amen, everybody say January 2nd, amen. On January 2nd through, uh, for, the, for the next 21 days, starting on the, the 2nd, we will be um, fasting together as a body. We invite you, amen, to join us in the Daniel fast, amen. Uh, praise God. We'll be, all right, that's not the slide. I'm not sure. That's not the one, amen. That's an old one, amen. 21 days, amen. Remove that if you can real quickly. I don't need people remembering that stuff. Take it off. I don't know who's in the background, but take it off, take it off. Praise God, amen. Thank you, amen. Y'all listen to me. 21 days. I don't want nobody calling me be like, I thought we still going. 21 days. <laughs> Amen. Starting again on um, January 2nd, the Daniel Fast. For information on that, you can do a number of things. First, you can visit our website. Amen. That's the city of restoration.org. That's dot O-R-G. Um, roundabout events. I believe there is a um, option there for you to find out about the Daniel Fast, how to govern yourself. There's also emails that are sent on a weekly, um, around about Wednesdays at, seven, um, at 8 a.m. Amen. It goes out and you can read it at your leisure, but therein you'll find information also on the Daniel Fast. Another place, oh my God, you're not without means to get in the information you need. Another place is the coordination group on Facebook. Amen. Where you can get information there. Um, in fact, some information is going to be loaded up and being sent out on a daily just to help you prepare. Amen. For fasting. You know, we had or I had an opportunity a few weeks ago to speak to this audience, um, to this congregation in Bible study about the importance of fasting and what it does and the blessings that come as a result. And even more, how to prepare for such. Amen. And so we want to remind you of some of the things you can do in advance. Amen. If you've never um, fasted before, this might be your hour, especially if you're praying about some things. Amen. How many of you know you um, praise God that God has some great things in store for you? Amen. Praise God. How many of you believe in God for a miracle or even a blessing or a breakthrough? Praise God. Amen. We are too. Amen. And so we're putting our plates aside. Amen. Um, for a season, at least um, some things that we're going to partake in or we are accustomed to partaking in, we're putting aside for a season. And again, we'll be entertaining the Daniel Fast. Um, the best place to go for that information, again, is to those, um, that of the website, that of Facebook. And in fact, I believe some information will also come to you via text messaging. Amen? All right. With that being said, can I have you to stand real quickly one more time? Amen. There's some wonderful people in the room, amen, that we must get to know. Amen. And perhaps somebody right nearby is a guest this morning. Perhaps somebody, amen, you haven't seen in a while is also around you. So before we start moving, just look around and, 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 and set your eyes affixed on somebody and, and walk over to them real quickly right now. And do me a favor, take your phone with you and say, can I take a selfie with you? Amen. Can I take a quick picture with you? Amen. You look so good. Give a compliment. Give a hug. Give a warm welcome. Amen. Make your time. Make your, take your time. Take your time. Go ahead. We welcome you to the house of the Lord. We welcome you. God bless you as our musicians play. Amen. Take a selfie. Amen. Hashtag coordination. Hashtag Christmas 23. Hashtag whatever you want to put on the end. <laughs> God bless you. Welcome. You can get out of your rows. You can get out of your seat. This is a quick moment. I see spouses. I see children. I see family. Amen. Soon the bees. Amen. To all our guests, welcome once again. So glad you came. Amen. Praise God. My brother, my sister, wonderful. It is to see you in the house of the Lord. Cross the aisles get to know each other 
especially before this year is over. Amen. Exchange a number. Hey, it's been a while since I've seen you. How you doing? Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Even in advance of such. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. If somebody has a flip phone, tell them it's not going to work. <laughs> it may not work. God bless you. God bless you. Welcome to our newest members. Amen. We God bless you. We're so grateful you joined us. And just in case we're friends on social media, and if we're not, go ahead and find us. We'd love to get to know you. Tag one of us, my wife or myself. Amen. That's Pastor O'Neill Salmon and Georgia Salmon. Amen. You can tag us as well if you feel like it. We're pretty much on all platforms. Facebook, Instagram, that's IG, TikTok, you name it, we're there. Somebody needs to update their Facebook picture right now. <laughs> this would be a great time. You look real good. You look real good. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Yo, listen, listen, listen to this. God made room for haters, didn't he? I'm gonna hate on somebody right now. Watch this, Sicily. I'm giving them extra time because I know the Android lovers. They need time for their phone to update. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Willie Ray, we are so grateful to see you in the house of the Lord today. We've been praying your strength. Amen. Thank God for you, men of God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I see my beautiful bride. Amen. Amen. I, I just want her to, she don't know I'm asking to do this. Come on up, baby, if you can, real quickly. I want you to greet this wonderful crowd. Amen. Let's welcome our first lady, Dr. Shauna, God bless you. God kept you. God kept you. Thank God for his covering and his angels. Lynette, I heard Dr. Lynette, thank you so much for being there for the family. You want me to preach? <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. Good morning, good morning. We praise God for his presence in this place. I'm out of breath. Just took pictures with everyone. We are so grateful for what the Lord is doing. We welcome you to the city of restoration. Um, I always come up here and say, Lord, tell me what to say. Even if I have something to say, tell me what to say. And he just said to me to pray for all of you that may be grieving in some kind of way. Thank you, Father. So if you don't mind, stretch your hands across the room or tap someone on their shoulder. Now keep this in mind before we pray. Grief is not just the loss of a loved one. Sometimes you look over the year and you've lost a job, you've lost a friend, you've lost a motivation. And God wants you to grieve well. In this season, while we are reminded that it, so much is going on and 
Some people feel like they might be alone for Christmas. Let me remind you as best I can, Jesus is still here. And he is the reason why we celebrate. And as I walked through the island back to my husband's country home and saw so many people that didn't even have a fraction of what I have, I said, God, I don't need anything. You've already done enough. So while you pray, I want you to pray with the you already done enough spirit. Touch somebody on the shoulder, squeeze their hand and just say, I'm going to pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for the body that is here today. We thank you, God, for this divine moment, this divine welcome, Lord God. Father, we are reminded right now that you are the purpose of this season and every day of our lives and as long as we have you God we can still make it father I pray that you would begin to help us to squeeze the hand that we are holding as if blood is rushing through it right now we speak life over the broken heart we speak hope over the grieving spirit we ask you to wrap your arms of compassion around those that might be broken, missing a loved one, missing a situation, emotional about times. God, heal their mind, their body, and their soul. Resurrect their spirit. Oh, God, we declare it right now. Restoration come. Restoration come. Restoration come. Restoration come. Restoration come. Move through this house, God, and begin to heal the hearts of you your people God I know you call me up here to welcome but God I'm following your Holy Spirit right now Lord God somebody needs a touch from you and we declare God that you can do what only you can do we trust you right now we believe you to make a way out of no way while we're holding hands God break doors down open windows God create ways that we thought could not be created bless us in ways we thought we could not be blessed God we cross it over early into what you have new for us we will not wait on man we will not get distracted but God we are focused on you I trust you now and I believe you for every person that is represented in this place we welcome you into our lives if you believe it if you love the Lord you take the next 20 seconds and just give him glory 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 come on come on I didn't ask you to put your hands together for me but could you put your hands together like the devil is between them and give God praise and look at somebody and tell them I'm still here God bless you I love you all God be the glory. Somebody shout hallelujah. He's so good. He's so good. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Merry Christmas to everyone. Amen. Praise God. Amen. What a wonderful day. What a wonderful day. Amen. Praise God. Amen. You don't understand. You don't really understand how good God has been. Amen. To, to us. Praise God. He has been so good. He has brought us, he has kept us, he has fortified us, he has blessed us. Amen. We can't say enough. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Uh, before we get into the word, and there's a quick word I want to share with you. I won't have you long. Amen. But it is a word, I believe, um, indicative of the time that we're in. Amen. But before we get there, amen, I think this is a great opportunity to ask of you to put a seed in the ground, amen, to plant a seed in the ground, amen. And so um, as we prepare ourselves and as you prepare yourself likewise, I want to encourage you to take out a seed this morning. Um, it was but a few years ago, amen, but a few years ago that I was moved personally to plant what I call a Christmas seed. Um, it wasn't much, at least, you know, much, what we call much at times can be relative. Um, 
because what's much to one may not be much to another and vice versa amen but for me it wasn't much it was but a $25 seed it was not my tithes it was just an offering um, I chose 25 because I think at that particular time and it was a Sunday Christmas landed on a Sunday and uh, the Lord literally pressed um, impressed upon me I would say the Holy Spirit to plant a $25 seed in the ground I won't say that God didn't bless as a result because he did. More important for me in that moment was me recognizing that Christmas was never about us as we sometimes make it out to be. But it was about the birth of our savior. And I say it that way because I've been raised, amen, to give honor where honor is due, amen. And whenever I have the opportunity to show my gratitude, I do. Um, especially when it is in my means to do so. I've also been taught whenever you go to a celebration, amen, bring something with you. How many hate people who come over Thanksgiving empty-handed? Amen. They'll come, they come with their Tupperware. Y'all have family members like that? I have some. Amen. Amen. And they go, they go straight to the kitchen. Amen. The table to get what they can to bring back home. And that's all good and all. But just like uh, any other celebrations, weddings, you name it in turn, especially birthdays, amen, especially if they be family. And, and catch this, as being born in the family of Christ, amen, that's our Father. What will you bring to the table or present to him? What I started out doing as a personal challenge I have over the years, amen, somehow sewn it into different um, conversations to consider sowing a seed of $25. I'm not going to put anything else to it because it's just that. It's a seed to say thank you for being here. I just want to honor you, God, by bringing a seed to your table. And that's all I'm asking. In fact, let's make it official that today going forward on Christmas, a $25 seed. Is that much? It can be if you, if you didn't prepare for it. But if you put something away and even if you just consider, I'm going to sacrifice this today. I want you to challenge, or be challenged today in doing that. And if you receive that challenge or better yet, if you would like to sow with us, whatever you can do, 25, 250, 200, 2,500, 2 million, 500,000. I don't want to put nothing part. I don't know who's in the room. Praise God. Amen. Amen. I promise you we'll be out of this school real quick if you put two million five hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> Jesus, we might just buy the school. Amen. And let's move it on. Amen. To God be the glory. But when you have it, amen, would you prepare um, and stand with us? Means to give in are available via Cash App. Um, for that, you can find us, dollar sign, the City of Restoration. Information is on the screen. Givelify. We even have Zelle now. Yeah. Catch this. For those that love Zelle and want to use Zelle, it's 813. Let me give you the number. I'm trying to remember what it is. <laughs> I'll text it to you all because I want my phone to be going off. And then it'll be, I'm sorry. Let me get my bag real quick. I'm sorry. All right, Cash App, Zelle, if you know what that is, Givelify. If you're making checks out, feel free to make it out to the City of Restoration. If you want to give via cash um, or even a debit, credit, amen, you can make your way to the podium upon which time you can sow that seed. When you have that seed or you're ready to sow it, would you just lift up your device, your phones, your whatever it is, your seed in hand, amen, as we pray a blessing over it. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy and your tender mercies towards us. God, we pray, Holy Spirit, that you would 
Lord Jesus, redeem the time as you would redeem the, the seed. Your promises concerning your people are yea and amen. And the church, God, Lord Jesus, rejoices today because you are ever prevailing, ever sovereign, ever capable. Lord Jesus, and we trust you in faith. Lord Jesus, and today as we plant our seed in good ground, we know, God, that you will bring a harvest and a return. Lord Jesus, oh God, we put a demand on this seed, God, that it will be multiplied, that it will do the work to which, oh God, it's assigned to do. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for giving seed to the sower. We trust you now herewith. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody shout in Jesus' name. Amen. Feel free to come from wherever you are. Amen. Our ushers are, are leading you. Feel free. There's receptacles here at the front. Amen. To which you can deposit that seed. Amen. what is the number concerning Zell? We'll send a text out shortly, amen, regarding that. We thank you, amen, for your seats today, amen, and your sowing and your support, amen, amen. Listen, before the year closes out, amen, um, and we have one more Sunday to go, amen, I want to take a quick moment to just say thank you to all our staff, thank you to all those working in the forefront, the backgrounds, week to week, Amen. Praise God, everybody on the background. You name it. You name it. Let's give God praise for those in the lobby, those working in our children's group. And let me tell you, it takes a lot to keep this thing going. Praise God. Amen. And even the more, amen, to our assistant pastors. Amen. Amen. Pastor Merritt and his beautiful bride, Amen Cassandra. Thank you all for stepping in. Praise God and for doing what you do. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Grab your Bible if you would. I told you I'm not going to be long. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And I do mean that. Amen. 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 <laughs> I don't know what those mean, but uh, I'm putting it to the test today. Luke chapter 1. If you would, Luke chapter 1, verse 26. I'm going to be reading the New International Version of this text. It makes it a little bit more relatable. And so to that end, amen, I want to read it. Uh, the New International Version, amen. Luke chapter 1, verse 26, amen. Uh, I believe some photos are going to be available or taken, rather, in the lobby shortly. Um, if you would like to pose up, you name it. Amen. Some of our very skilled photographers here um, and videographers are going to be doing their thing throughout, so don't mind them. Amen. If you want to seize that opportunity, feel free. Amen. Amen. I want to give you time, even at the end, to just kind of take a moment and, and love on each other because I know how important this season is. Amen. Several of you have been 
transposed here in part. Your family is not from Florida. You don't have nobody nearby. Amen. And this is family for you. We want you to have that time. Amen. How, you, how many of you know it's important, amen, to, to connect? Connection matters. Amen. And so we want to seize that opportunity. Amen. Praise God. Now, if you found the word, say amen. Amen. It's on screen. You can remain seated. I want to read this text. Amen. The Bible says, in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel of the Lord went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, do not be afraid. Let, 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 let me put it this way. Has anybody ever walked up to you and said something of that sort? Hey, woman of God, you know, you're so anointed. I can see the glory of God on your life. Man of God, you are so highly favored. Uh, or anything in that vernacular. You're so gifted and your mind goes quickly to... What do you want? You know, your spouse came up to me and be like, baby, man, you look so good. You look so sweet. You look so amazing. What do you want? What have you done? What's going on? Where are you going with this? All right, let's keep going. This is Mary's response. Back up to verse 29. She was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. And the angel said unto her, do not be afraid. Mary, you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you, and you are to call him, somebody say with me, Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will, have, will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth I'll repeat that uh, for whatever relevance it may mean. Amen. Even to Elizabeth, who was in her old age. Never allow man to determine, praise God, by you what God can do for you. And somebody missed that. I'll say it again. Never allow man or what man has said by you and about you to hinder what you know God can do for you. My God. Even Elizabeth, in relative, her relative, was going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God, watch this, for no word from God will ever fail. No word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Amen. Let's have a moment to pray. Father, Lord, we thank you right now for the reading of your word. I pray you'll impart upon me the spirit of grace to be able to minister this word and let your people receive with joy in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. For a quick moment, and I really do mean that, for a quick moment, I want to speak to the meaning of Christmas. The meaning of Christmas. My wife alluded to um, and shared with you just a moment ago that she uh, and I and our family in part were able to travel with me back home to my birthplace. Um, just recently we returned on Friday night and so um, this week was spent reminiscing, um, reflecting. For me it had been um, to be back where we went, it had been almost 20 years. I'm 45 years of age today and 20 years before I had been back. And even then, 20 years ago, let me be clear, amen, it was for the grieving of my mother, my grandmother, I'm sorry, my grandmother. My grandmother had passed. And so 
Um, I was there but for maybe a day or two, um, as far as I can recollect, just for the, 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 the reflection of life, the celebration of her life. So I didn't have much time to really get inundated with the everyday life and, and get back to, you know, conversations that once were held and just kind of take in what was um, our experience of past. So if I take that moment for a moment, and that's again almost 20 years ago, and I consider I was only there for a day or two, if I trace it back even further, I really had not been there since the age of 12. So even much longer. Point in turn is this, that um, in the 12 years of living in Jamaica, born there, amen, um, much of who I am today is as a result of my upbringing then. Um, I then migrated to New York and from New York here to Florida. My going back to Jamaica meant so much to me and not just me, but to my wife and to my children. I wanted them to walk the grounds I walked on. I wanted them to, um, to be able to meet some of the people that were still living that, um, that we could meet in part. Um, it was poignant because there were a lot of things that's moving right now in our family. And if we didn't seize this moment in a matter of months, even um, to be really honest, days, it could change that dramatically. And places that I could go to may not be afforded to us the opportunity to because of things or decisions the family is making. Um, point in turn is this. It was an appointed time. And while I went back and was or not even the going... The, the, the actual going back, before going back, I started reflecting upon this season and how this season, when it comes to Christmas, meant so much to um, our family and meant so much to our community and meant so much to the body of Christ. I regarded how most of my strongest, my strongest memories of a child um, point back to Jamaica. And I know I spent my teenage years in part here, but my greatest and most cherished moments of Christmas, and I'm not talking about I didn't have, I don't have memories of my wife and I and then our children. I'm talking about my childhood. It stemmed back from then because back then, watch this, back then, um, how can I say this delicately? It wasn't about things. It wasn't about stuff. I don't know if you've ever been um, told you were poor, but you didn't know it. Anybody in here? You found out later you were poor, but the whole while you never felt poor. You didn't even know you were without because you never went to bed hungry. You, you, didn't, you had what you had, and you just lived with it, and you were content. Praise God, and you were okay. Praise God. It took somebody to tell us we were poor. I was like, what you talking about? I don't know what poor looks like. I've never went to bed hungry. They were like, no, you were poor. I was like, oh, I thought I was middle class. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I'm no, it's not classism. I'm not trying to speak to that. I'm just talking about a mentality and a state of mind. But here's the thing, praise God. What we valued was the experiences, the time. The, what we valued was the lessons we've been taught. You see, growing up in church, in part, especially in the Christian church, we were taught, amen, the relevance and the importance and the true meaning of Christmas. And yet, while I'm preparing to go and I'm in this excitement to get ready to go and to be there and to be able to walk the streets and, and, and be reunited with king folk and just connected, amen, there was a little bit of reservation in me because um, I noticed how things have changed here over time. It seemed like people, you know, we're so censored and we're in this cancel culture experience where people don't want to say Merry Christmas and you almost as a child of God hesitant to say it too because you don't want to offend nobody. Merry Christmas. Praise God. You don't want to, you know, upset the equilibrium of the environments you're in because on the job, if you say it, somebody might get offended. If you, if you go into a store, somebody might just get disturbed, perturbed. But it's okay to say they, them, and all of that, but it's not okay to say Christ in Christmas. All right, so, um, you know, we, 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 I'm like, I'm, I'm in this place, and I'm like, God, um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if things have changed. And so I'm not trying to build my hopes and my anticipation so great that I get disappointed in going back to where I was born and, and getting reacquainted with the life and the lifestyle. And so I'm like, Lord, I pray it hasn't changed too much. And I'm telling my children about it and how we grew up and how um, for us, and it wasn't that there weren't gifts, but for us it was the simple things, the small things, the 
what you may call insignificant things. Some of us, we, we're for, more from the modern age. We, we got millennials and we got other people. And I'm not bashing you now by saying this, but you didn't grow up with some of the things we grew up with. The simple things, sometimes the simple things was just getting a jigsaw puzzle. Um, the, the simple things might just getting a whistle. The simple things was just, it was just simple stuff. You know, we didn't get the Xbox, the PS5. We didn't get the, the Nintendo Switch, the... Mac, the, the whatever, I mean, I don't know whatever, whatever they're giving out now or praise God. We didn't have that stuff, you know. If you got He-Man, anybody remember He-Man? Um, dated myself. I'm all right with that. Amen. I remember my He-Man and eventually He-Man became the one-handed man because somebody, I lent my toy to broke the arm and then I had to figure out how to make him still strong. And Praise God. And then, you know, you play with your stuff till, you know, they just fall apart and you just start remaking, you know, like, okay, well, I guess now you're, you, 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 we're going to do surgery. Now we're going to tape it up, wrap it up, whatever it is. We're going to find a way to enjoy the time. Because it really wasn't, again, while we enjoy the gifts, it was about the family coming together. It was about the sharing of stories. It was about one generation passing on their stories to the next so that they can run with it and share it with their generation in turn. It was about sitting together at a great meal. It was about remembering the reason for the season that if, in fact, praise God, we should forget. It was never about us. While we do make some things about us coming together, it was also about us saying, thank you, Jesus. It was about us saying, Lord, thank you for coming into this world for such a time as this. It was about remembering the true meaning. Can I wrap these meanings up in, in, through the letter M? The first meaning is the, uh, that, um, that we must reflect upon is that he's a miracle. Praise God. That Christ is a miracle. Praise God. The scripture tells us here, amen, praise God, that Christ, watch this, that the angel of the Lord, Gabriel, praise God, went to the virgin Mary, praise God, and proclaimed unto her that through her loins, through her womb, amen, would be birthed the son of God. Now, praise God. That's a miracle. What's the miracle? That, watch this, she is a virgin. Praise God. That's the miracle that this woman, praise God, would, would, would the angel said was highly favored, blessed and highly favored, would give birth to the Son of God. Praise God. That's a miracle. Praise God. And we ought to esteem and remember, praise God, that it was not due to man's or human con conception that Jesus came into the world, but it was the Holy Spirit that endowed and placed himself within her. Praise God. And then out of her, praise God, we come, we come to know the Savior, the Redeemer. Out of her loins, praise God. In her was the promise. In her was a miracle. I'm suggesting to you that there are some things God has done by you that you can only write uh, at the end of the day, at the end of the script to be a miracle. I don't know how I'm still here. All I can tell you it's a miracle. All I know is that God has called me to be here for such a time as this and he's put a miracle before you. He's put a miracle in me and I can testify just like Mary. Praise God. God could testify about her experience uh, of having given birth. I can tell you there's some stuff that God has done for me that I can only say is a miracle. There's some things that God has released through my loins and through my womb that can I only say is a miracle. How many of you know that he still works miracles? You see, it was essential that Jesus be the God, watch this, be God to make atonement and that he become the man to identify with our salvation. It was necessary. He was, watch this, he was man and man with whom, in man with whom the fullness of God dwelled. It was man. He put man, he put baby, he put Christ in her. A miracle. To perform then miraculous deeds. You got to catch this. He put a miracle in her to perform miracles. Y'all, y'all, so, y'all. I know we, we we don't understand because we we don't even realize that when God gives us certain gifts and gives us certain graces, that it's not just for us. <laughs> praise God, and praise God. That God is expecting and put a demand on that thing. Praise God, and in miracle being put in her, that miracle maker, that miracle that was in her was to then perform miracles. That was the same miracle that fed the five thousand. That was the same miracle that walked on the sea. That was the same miracle. 
that went to hell, death, and the grave and came back. The miracle. He lived a miraculous life, in fact. You know, this week, um, again, I, I reflect for a quick moment, I digress. Um, while we were getting, out, getting ready to go, here comes the day and the time now. Uh, we, pl we plan to catch this. We plan to go see my grandmother's house. And I told my kids the, the day before, Pastor, I said, listen, um, I've been holding this back um, because as the day and the time approaches, I'm getting very emotional. Because I'm like, I'm going back to where I spent my summers. See, you don't remember school, but you remember your summers for the most part. It's where I spent my Christmases. And Christmas was very special back then and still is. Because when you don't have stuff, you remember everything else. Because stuff can become the distraction. And so... Um, I got emotional about it, and I told him, I said, I'm getting ready to go back. I just want you all to know, you know, how I'm feeling. And then here comes the day, and I'm, you know, I'm awake, I'm ready to go, and our ride comes. Um, and it's a family member, and he picks us up, and we get going. It was going to be almost a three-hour journey to my grandmother's house. About 45 minutes in. He hits a bump in the road, and the tire busts. And I'm like, you ain't never been to Jamaica. <laughs> There's some stuff. All I have to say at the end of the day is, <laughs> welcome to Jamaica. <laughs> the tire busts. Now, when it did, we, we all assumed at best, um, we're just going to come out and we're going to change the tires. Hopefully there's a spare. <laughs> as soon as the car pulls over, and I'm, I'm going to take my little time here. Let me watch it. I'm going, as soon as the car pulls over, watch this. All, all of a sudden, several people who were passerbys started slowing down. One gentleman on a bike stopped and said, you okay? I said, um, we're all talking. He's like, yeah, we're good. He said, you need anything? Um, we said, um, no. He's like, I can go up the street if you need me. I was like. I'm thinking my mind, because, you see, I've been away for a while. I'm like, who are you? <laughs> and what do you mean anything? I'm, I'm trying, trying to figure out where this is going. And I'm just being observant. And, and there are a number of people that started slowing up. And I mean, not just slowing up, but pulling over and coming out of their cars. One gentleman said, I'm headed to some different town, some different destination. I know the town, but it's very far off from where we were going. And he said, um, um, you need my help? I said, well, you know, we're trying to change this tire. He said, all right. He got out of his car and he started helping us. A gentleman, we just so happened to break down across from a um, bar and the owner there um, walked out and came over to us and he was also watching over us, assisting us in whatever way. And so we try to, you know, deal with it and then we realize, um, you know what, there is a spear. Watch this. There is a spear. The spear, however, has little air in it. Now we need air, and we have a busted tire, we have a spare tire, but it has no air. The gentleman then took the tire and said, um, don't worry, I'm going to go get um, air and I'll come back. Uh, um, our driver just liberally gives him the tire, and I'm thinking, <laughs> I, I know you from here, but you didn't act like you knew each other. He didn't greet you. You didn't say nothing. You just be, hey, I'm going to take the tire and go. And then he turns around and goes the opposite direction that he came from, the same direction we were coming from, and he goes off with the tire. And we're all sitting there like, okay. That just happened. Um, maybe about 15 minutes later, he comes back, and the tire, and he has the tire, and he's ready to put it on. And we're excited, like, yes, we're finally going to get back on this road because we got three, well, two, two hours, 15 minutes ahead of us, still journey. And, and we're only going to my grandmother but for a few hours because we want to get back before the night. Amen. Because I'm going to tell you right now, if you go to Jamaica, don't drive at night. If you, it's not your first time, you're going to be interceding like you never interceded before. <laughs> Praise God. I promise you, my prayer life changed after the road trip. I was in the front seat. I was like, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Lord, if I have not repented, I repent right now. In the name of Jesus. I started to try to convince my, my passengers, wife, children, 
you know, the Lord said you should switch seats with me. Isn't it time to be in the front, not in the back? <laughs> Nobody wanted to switch. Anyway, praise God. Um, I'm talking about the miracle here. I'm talking about the miracle. Um, watch this. And he comes back. He does that. He starts trying to change it. And then we realize the rim on the spear is not the rim for the car. <laughs> you ever thought you got a blessing? <laughs> and we're like, oh, my God. So now we have no spare. What do you do? The driver says, um, don't worry, man. Let's, let's figure this out. I'm going to go back. I saw a shop while I was there getting the tire filled. How about you give me back the tire? Now our driver and him go back. Now, mind you, he's going somewhere himself. He goes back to in the direction that, we just, that he just came from and we all just came from. Again, the second time with that tire, came, comes back probably about another 30, 45 minutes. And we're all sitting there, my wife, my kids. We're the strangers in the mountains on an off-road. Stuff happened nobody knows about because there ain't no cameras around to catch what's going on. And we got two Rastas <laughs> watching us. God will have angels. I don't know how. I just... <laughs> And they are watching us and watching over us. And the crazy thing, I think one of them said, you know, Jesus got you. I was like, so you tell me anybody and everybody knows who Jesus is. All right, so Jesus watching over you. And, he, and they stayed and watched us the whole time. The whole time. And I'm sitting there and I'm just being grateful. My wife and I and my children, we're all talking and having grateful moments and bantering and talking and laughing about how this is an experience that's going to go down in the history books and just relishing in the moment. Because, you see, you got to learn how to take lemon and make lemonades. Some of us don't know how to be grateful when dispositions and situations happen and just count it all joy. There's something to be said about it and learn from it. And all we considered was, look how many people pulled over. Look how many people stopped and went out of their way. Look at this man who we do not know. And frankly, I still don't know his name. Praise God. He pulled over and did his part in helping us get back on the road. And how many people tried and served and did whatever they could. I mean, they even fed us on the side of the road. All while we're facing this delay and this dilemma. And I'm saying, God, you're off in miracles when we don't even see it as miracles. You're pulling things together even when we don't realize how he's pulling it together. And you got to learn how to be grateful because little is much when God is in it. Look how blessed you are. That story could have been different because where we had the burst, there was literally just, just one more lane over. We could have been in the ditch. What if, what if we had been so far out, and imagine this, catch this. After we passed that one bar, that one place, we went probably a good hour before seeing another building. That would have put us even further along had it happened further along. But God knew when. So count it all joy even when you feel like you tripped and you felt like it didn't happen the way it should have happened. I said, God, thank you, thank you, thank you, the meaning of Christmas. What we saw was the meaning of Christmas being fulfilled. It wasn't about the gifts. It wasn't about the handouts. It wasn't about what they could get from us or what we could give to them. What they gave was love. What they gave was appreciation. What they gave was service. What they gave was help. And you got to be willing to receive help from wherever it comes. That was powerful to me. So not only miracle, but somebody write down the second one, the next M is a mother. As a mother. God used a mother. He put a miracle in a mother. The Bible says, he that, he that is in Christ has become a new creature. All things being passed away, behold, all things becoming new. In that mother dwelled a womb. In that womb dwelt this child, that seed, that miracle. He gave, he praised it, he gave this gift to her and deemed her to be favored. Oh God. 
Did not the word say in 28, the angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. My God, you need to know now and be reminded that God is with you this Christmas. So if everything else doesn't line up and measure up the way you think in part it should, understand that Christ is is with you. He was with us on that journey. He was with us through every situation, every circumstance, be it whatever we consider favorable or not. God is with you as he's with you and I right now. Whew. She was a virgin, meaning she was not exposed. She was not touched. She was a virgin. She was new. And in that newness, she was more morally pure. In that newness, God put a miracle in her. When it is that you give your life to Christ, understand that you are now new in his eyes. And the grace upon you, praise God, need not be squandered and need not be ignored and need not be, uh, praise God, um, uh, uh, defiled because it is something of, of, of God's goodness to put himself in you. Praise God. In, in me, the Bible says, without him dwelleth no good thing. In me, there's sin that abides in me. But say, thank God when he died on Calvary's cross and he, rose, and he rose up from the grave and then he came back in the form of the comforter. Now that comforter is in me and it appears and it, oh God, it reconciles me back to him and it makes me able to say I am a child of God. This was the woman of God. Here's number next on this. Not only was there a miracle and there was a mother, but there was a manger. I suggest in this last part of it all, there was a manger. Here's the, here's the thing about this manger. This manger to which Christ was born in, praise God, it, it was unconceivable that he would have been born there because if he be the son of man, praise God, and the God, sovereign, king of kings, lord of lords, why would he be born in anything less than the best? Oh, God. Why would he be found born in a manger? Here's the problem with uh, today's culture. Many of whom we perceive in part uh, will be elevated, leveraged, or put up for the next place and the next position. We perceive that they will come from a place of grace prestige. Uh, but God said, no, you're looking in the wrong places. Wait for those that are able to come up from the ground or from the floor up. Praise God. Just don't watch for those that have, it seems like they have been entitled and they've been born with a silver spoon. Understand that the son of man, grew, watch this, that he will be be found in a manger, a, a, a lowly place, a place that many would be forgotten and, and many wouldn't even consider in turn. That's the place. And then he'll be served by a few. He'd be born in a city in a small place. Bethlehem was a little town. That's where we get the song, Old Little Town of Bethlehem. It was a small place, born in a small manger then met by only three or few wise men. Point in turn is this. It is not in the abundance and the great measure of things that you will find Christ oftentimes showing up. Because sometimes when you look under the tree, you can see a great much and get overwhelmed. And then there are times where you realize it isn't a matter of what's under the tree. I've realized what matters to me is not what was on the tree, but who was on that tree. And I'm saying this because, it, because if you don't know how to be grateful for who was on the tree, you'll never truly appreciate what comes under, under the tree. I have to be reminded and I have to ensure that my children and you in part are reminded that at the end of the day, Christmas was about who went on that tree. It was about who came into this world for you and I. For God so loved the world, the Bible says, that he what? He gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe on him should not perish but have what? Everlasting life. I'm so grateful to be able to tell you this Christmas Eve that God, <laughs> praise God, or there is no Christ. Let me put it this way. Or there is no Christmas without Christ. 
I know the world would love to re 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 receive it or project it as Xmas and happy holidays, and that's fine. We might use it in our vernacular, that's fine. But at the end of the day, there is no Christmas without Christ. I, I'm so grateful I got a chance to go back home, but I'm so grateful to be able to say that my children now have this experience and that I'm able to come back even more grateful for the fact that at the end of the day, it doesn't matter the things, because the things eventually lose their value and their importance. As I get older, and I promise you, there are several people that can relate to that in this room. You, as you get older, you regard that isn't the stuff. Stuff, as, as, you know, that's the thing about it. The Bible says all that's in the world is vanity and the vexation of spirit. You'll get stuff and then be this, watch this. Uh, you still want some more, never really feeling satisfied. But there's some stuff you can never put a price on. You can never put a price on. You see, when I come into it, I told my wife, I said this, I, I'm, I'm, I'm longing to, and then they blessed us today with it. I'm longing to hear some Christmas songs. I'm, I'm, I'm just that kind of person. I, I, I don't mind the, praise God, the gifts, but I love the lights. I love the, I love the extra effort. Oh, my God. In fact, I'm like a baby. Mm, praise God. I love the wrapping more than the gifts sometimes. I just love the fact that you went a little extra. Praise God. I'm, I'm talking about, really, when you put some time in. I'm loving the fact that, you know what, guess what? It's about that warm embrace and that special attention attention to things and to details at times. That's what matters because at the end of the day, guess what? That's what Christ died for. It wasn't for the stuff. It was for you and I, praise God. It was for the ability to come together as loved ones and friends and family and as a community and be there for one another. Important for me was also coming into the house of the Lord as it were, as it was important for you to come into his presence and say, thank you, Jesus for coming into this world and saving such a wretch as I am, for putting a miracle, working a miracle so that I could come in to this sacred space and break bread and share her life. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let's put the meaning back on Christmas. It's not about the stuff. And, 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 and we have a ritual in our home before any gift open. Let's pray. Before any gift open, what are you grateful for? Because guess what? We go to the stuff. Yeah, the stuff, the stuff. But in a year, two, memory. But as you grow older and as you go through life, you start realizing the greatest gift some of us have is who we see right here around us. Because you remember when that person was there and that call came in when you needed it and when they showed up when you needed it most and when it was that you could call on them and count on them, that mattered. When I see the hope in these children's eyes when they're performing and they're giving their best, that matters. Because you know what, when they walk off this stage, they ought to lift up their chest and feel a little bit more prouder. And you ought to make them feel even more prouder for having graced the stage when part of, watch this, when they become the next ministers and the next evangelists and the next preachers and teachers and the next great person in whatever way, praise God. You ought to be so proud that they gave their very best. Let's all stand over this room. Let's all stand. I don't care what Dollar Tree and Walmart and Sam's and all of these people do. Seemed like as Christmas was approaching, they all pulled out their, you know, nowadays they advance it ahead of Christmas. Be right there, <laughs> you know, about summer you start seeing Christmas stuff. And then it seemed like as Christmas approaches, less and less stuff. They're not even decor no more. They just say, Phew. Y'all know what time it is. And I know it's not about that. But I feel like sometimes if we're not careful, we'll let the world come in and change how we reverence the time. I just, I, I might be holding on to something somebody calls fleeting. Like it's just time and you gotta assimilate into the norm. No. I realized this, and I told my wife this, I said, what we fail to acknowledge, we will also fail to reverence. 
And when we get to a point where we start failing in recognizing the significance of these. Look, I'm not caught up with the people who want to say, well, you know, he wasn't born on the 25th. I could care less. Okay, make it the 26th. I'm going to celebrate it then. What does it matter? Thank God he was born. How about that? We can argue the rest when he comes. You know what's crazy about that? This is the funny thing. I'm going to tell you all this. We were laughing at our table back home because we found out this is truth. We found out in our area, I don't know how true this is for all of Jamaica, but I found out that back in the days when a child was born, they would keep, the mother would keep that child in the room for about seven, eight days. And then they would call the postman and tell him to go register the child. They would tell the postman the date and, catch this, the name. But it was up to the postman to remember the date and the name. And then people were literally being named different from the name because the postman was old. He didn't remember nothing. And a lot of time he would go and give whatever name he thought. And then the date for the people would be the date they registered, not the date they were born. I just found out my grandmother's name is Florinda. We've been calling her Florence for 45 years. My cousin I'm talking to, I'm like, Steve, how you doing, man? I haven't seen you in a while, hugging him. And then he was like, I said, how old are you? He's like, I'm 51. I said, 51, that's amazing. And then he's like, I said, where you live now? He's like, I'm in Florida, I'm in Fort Lauderdale. He's like, I was like, really? He said, like, yeah, he took, us, he took out his ID and showed it to me. And I'm looking at it like, oh yeah, you do live here in Florida. Then I said, hold up, your name's not Steve? His name was Vernon. How in the world were we calling him Steve this whole time? Here's the point, why I got digressed for a moment. Sometimes we get caught up in legalism. However you identify with him, for some he's Elohim. For some, he's Adonai, the risen Savior, God Almighty. I don't know what he means to you, but take a moment and just say thank you. This is a good moment to just say thank you. This is a good moment to just say, Lord, I love you. I'm so grateful for you. I'm so thankful. Oh, God, I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. You saved me. You kept me. You kept my family this whole year. You kept my mind this whole year. You kept my soul this whole year, God. You've been so good, Lord. I thank you. I thank you. Oh, God, danger seen and unseen. You kept me. You kept us. God, when I felt like breaking down and I had some low and low and low moments, you still kept The greatest gift. I don't know who sang it, but I'm not going to sing it, but it just came to mind. The greatest gift on earth is love. It's not what's under the tree. I think it's Kirk Franklin, I think. But, you know, I'm so grateful. Because when everything else passes away, oh God, and my memory fades. Oh God, don't ever let me forget you. Don't ever let me get so caught up. I can't afford this. I can't afford that. But Lord, you provide. You supply. Forget not all his benefits, the word says. Forget not his goodness and his mercy towards us. Lift your hands all over this room as a sign of saying, Lord, I submit, I surrender, I reverence, I acknowledge. Take a moment just to say thank you all over this room. What are you thankful for? Take a moment and just pray to him. I don't, I don't need to call an altar call right here, though the altar is open, but I, I want you to take a moment and just say thank you. 
I, I know it's so easy to go back home and feel like, you know, this year has been what a year. But you made it. And he's kept you from falling and he's kept you from crumbling. Thank you. Oh, God. I'm so new to this thing, God. I'm like Mary, somebody in here feeling like such. I, I don't feel qualified, <laughs> God, for what you are doing in my life. I don't feel like I measure up. I feel like I've lost more than I've gained. <laughs> oh, God, Lord Jesus. But he's kept you. Can I remind you he's kept you? This man that met us on the corner only had a sugar cane. That's all he really had that he could extend to us. And he gave it to us while we were there for a few hours. We couldn't leave him without blessing him. Because what meant not little to him or maybe much to him, but perhaps little to us, sustained us. about that man who I don't know what his next destination entailed but decided to stop go come back and then go again and come back why couldn't we we had to bless him not because he asked but because who does that it's so easy to drive down 75 and pass surmise and I wish them well I hope everything's all right but They don't even, listen, it wasn't even, catch this, you don't know who God will put in your path. Oh God, he said he can see to the sower and watch this. You, you sold to the prophet, you get a prophet's reward. They don't know that there was a prophetic mantle on our home and our family. So when they pulled over, they didn't even know they were sowing into the kingdom. Oh, God, y'all don't even know. God will use everybody around. Oh, God, people you don't even know to bless you. That's why we can't demonize nobody and look at people crazy and look at them, well, they don't deserve it. And they don't, they, you don't know who God will use. That man, I don't even know if we have a picture of him in my, that was taken, but I, that man stood there literally. I said, you, you okay? We'll be all right. You, you know, you can go. He's like, no. Nah. I'm away here just to make sure you all are good. And he literally stood there. God will have people standing up for you, praying for you, interceding for you. And you may never know their name, and you may never meet them, and you may never be able to break bread with them, but God has somebody praying. I'm talking to real. My kids are here. I'm not making this stuff up. Because they, when we were driving through, Joshua and I, I think, had a conversation. And, and one of it was, what's, what's the memory you're going to walk away with? And we all had some great conversations about who we talked to and all of these connections we've had. But the one that stood the strongest for all of us was breaking down on the side of a road. I'm going to make that a message. I don't know if it's going to be this church, but somebody's going to get this feel off breaking down a good Samaritan yeah. alongside yeah. Father Lord I thank you right now for the body of Christ and the believers and every family and every person those in and those out everybody God I pray Holy Spirit that you would reach them where they are oh God all that we did today was about introducing Christ to all. Let us not be glorified in any means and by any measure, oh God, let us never put ourselves in such a place that we stand in opposition, but help us to remain humble, to remain servants, submitted. Pray, Holy Spirit, that you bless each family, bless each one, each person, grace us all, keep us all minister to us all Lord Jesus oh God I pray you'll meet us where we are we pray for the grieving we 
prayed for the lost, reconcile them, bring them to Christ. Those dislodged from the body, bring them home. Bring them home. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Would you put your hands together and bless him? As you make yourselves ready to go, just know God is with you and for you. Amen. God bless you all. Church doors are open. Should you desire church home, we'd love on this Christmas Eve to get to know you, to welcome you to the family. God bless you. Hug somebody, turn around and greet somebody. Amen. Once again, we celebrate you. Our children are going to receive some tokens of love that were prepared by families and our church as well. Amen. To extend to them, God bless you. Thank you so much, sir. So if anyone would like prayer, you're more than welcome to meet us also at this altar. We don't mind holding and touching and agreeing with you. Amen. We're not in a hurry. We're not too busy. Amen. My wife and I will be here if you just want to say hello. We, if you want to take a photo, we're not too busy. If you want to take one, amen. We love you. God bless you. God bless you. Come on back next Sunday, 10 a.m. God bless you. Have a beautiful week.